Mr. Costa wants to see how much Gennaro's Tayatella costs, but she cannot find what she is looking for. What she would like is to search on the website for a specific product. Mr. Gennaro asks Georgie if he can build a search feature. For this, you need to learn some new things. Until now, we used hyperlinks to load our website pages in the browser. But now, instead of clicking a link, you want to enter some search text, let the server search for products, and see the results in the browser. I will show you how you can do this. I start with the visual part, which are the search box and search button in the header of the master page. The input box and button will be in a form tag. You will see why this is in a moment. Go to the code editor and open the master page. I will add a search form in the header under the logo. Before we add search functionality to the view, let's have a look in the browser. Start the web server. Click on all products in the browser to reload the index page. There is the search box and the search button. Let's style some things in the style sheet. I'll float the logo to the left and add the style for the search form. I also need to clear the floats after the header to make sure everything under the header renders correctly. Let's test this in the browser. Looking good. What happens when I enter a search text and press search? Nothing happened. Or did it? Look at the address bar. It has a query parameter called Q with the value of the search text. Where did it come from? When a form is submitted, a dictionary is created of all its elements that have a name. Here you see that the input box has name Q. This form will create an HTTP GET to the same page with the form dictionary added as query parameters. That is why you see this Q with the value from the search box in the URL. Now we need to respond to query parameter Q in the index view. I start by getting the value of Q. If Q is not in the get dictionary, an empty string will be returned. I'll print the value of filter and reload the page. As you see, the filter contains the value of the search box. I'll click on the All Products link and check the filter value again. Notice that the URL does not have the Q parameter anymore. Filter is now empty. So we can use this filter variable in the index view to check if a search took place. I remove the print statement and add another case to the switch. I'll test it in the browser.
That works. Let me search for Vino. That works as well. Notice that the search box is empty. When a search took place, the search box should show the search text. For this, I'll add the filter to the index view context so I can use it in the template. And then add a value attribute to the search box in the master page. The search box now keeps the search text. We still have a slight problem, however. I'm curious if you already guessed it. Let me show you by clicking on product details and typing in a search. As you can see, searching does not work on the product details page. This is because the form will always submit to the current page. But the product details page view does not know how to handle a search. The solution to this problem is to send any search requests back to the index view. Let me show you how to do this. Forms have an action attribute. Here we can specify to what page the request should go. Since we want search requests to go to the index page, I will use the index route to render the URL like this. I'll reload the product details page and try a search again. Searching now works on all pages. The next time Ms. Da Costa visits the Gennaro webshop, she can search for her favorite products. The project is going really well. Mr. Gennaro is very happy with the website you made for him. And another night falls over the town of Arco.